Hello and welcome to another episode from the water's edge and today we're doing something I've been excited about since we arranged the session and because of that of a big thanks to Anglin Direct we've been put on a date with the Spro guys to hopefully show us through a bit of light jig fishing which for me personally is something I've never actually done before so it's going to be a big learning curve for me so I've got Johnny here first of all welcome Hi, mate cheers uh, and we've had a little go already this morning but what we're doing is just taking a little break from fishing we've had a lot of little fish haven't we but hopefully we can talk you through a bit about the tackle we need because like I said for me I'm learning as well and for hopefully anyone who's not done this sort of fishing it was really simple and that was what I liked about it so I suppose let's start off with the basic basic what is jig fishing or soft bait fishing that we were doing earlier uh, it's, it's basically a, a stripped down form of fishing where you've got essentially a rod a reel line and a weighted hook on that weighted hook you put your lure in this case we were using um, a little array of different array weapons of in there. Soft plastics. Uh, we've got the paddle tiles, like these, which obviously they're ribbed and have a have sort of a enlarged area at the, at the end, which which uh, pushes the water through it, which then will will put the action into. It's it. amazing when you, you shoot me like just down, you know, literally how much moving that creates. Oh from, yeah, from doing pretty much nothing, it just like that. You can see why they hit it. It doesn't take a lot to make that. You can see the way I'm holding it now. The tail is just moving all over the Literally place. Literally without moving your hand in that. And then the other types we have are the split tails like this, which again have lots of movement, but when they're in the water, they, they keep a more of a straight profile and they don't move quite as much. That so Certainly in the winter time, uh, less is more. Yeah. So you put one of these on, you don't get quite the erratic movement that you would do with, with the paddle tail. And, is there um, any different, obviously there's loads of different colours in that. Does it make a difference? Do you think it makes a difference? Um, it does make a difference, but it's not the be all and end all. Um, so in very clear water, I'll always go for a natural and yep. more natural pattern. Um, so I'd go for maybe white and silver. I know you said this morning like that, that, was pretty, that was your favourite one, been, yeah. But then if you get slightly more coloured water, I'd probably go for a, a brighter colour. Maybe something with a bit of orange in, that always works well. Uh, fluorescent white is always good. You know yep. that really shows up in, in uh, coloured water well. But it's more about just giving it a giving it a try and seeing just what playing with it. Yeah, by the day. And then whatever works, stick to it. Brilliant. So let's move on then to a little bit because it's obviously not all about lures. You um you kindly lent us some some of the tackle today. So let's have a little look about the rods to start with. Then what rods do you need to do a style of fishing as well? Lightweight. It's it's all about being as light as possible. It almost looks like a little quiver tip rod, doesn't it, at this that's, end? That's essentially what it is. Um, you know, this is a a solid tip on this rod, um, but very light. I, I think this one's about a 7 to 28 gram. And it was them tiny little movements. I suppose that light tip makes that, that little jig move that in the water. Yeah, like you and, you know, coupled with the braid, everything you do down here, you want transmitted through the tip and put into the lure. So that's the importance of that rod. Yeah, that's right. And... Um, Depending on different circumstances, you might want more length, shorter, you know. Um, but really, it's, it comes down to having that that soft tip and being able to transmit everything through to the lure. So, and then we're down to little small reel. Yeah, lightweight reel. No need to have a, a big reel. Mainly fishing for small fish, so you don't need yeah. loads everything of line was nice on and it. close as well. Yeah, wasn't there's right, no yeah. casting about that. No. And then obviously, I'm assuming quite important is obviously having the braid on there. The braid, yeah. The braid is is the be all and end all, really. Um, the difference you get through braid fishing feeling every tiny little knock every you know every time you touch a little bit of weed or anything yeah. like that you can just feel it come right the way through um does so on this one you've got it coming down to a wire trace but on this one i noticed we had it coming down to fluorocarbon, fluorocarbon yeah so the difference and why, why why would you say the difference is between them well the reason i always put a wire trace on is when i'm when i come to a new piece of water i always like to put a wire trace on because anywhere you've got pike you yeah. know, you always stand a chance of, of hooking one. So I put the wire trace on and, and fish through quite hard to start with. And generally speaking, if there's pike there, they'll they'll have it. So the wire trace can so the wire get trace gives that protection. Um, and to be honest, like you saw this morning, it doesn't make a big difference no, to the perch. No, you were catching just as many as this little fluorocarbon one as yeah. So a lot of the time, I end up leaving it on. I just get I just do a little loop to loop with a perfection loop. Yeah knotable wire down to a loop onto a jig head and away you go if the fish are being particularly finicky more hap it happens more in the winter I'll, then i'll go to the strip it right back to the yeah, yeah that's right so i know this morning as well before we get back fishing we were catching a lot of perch a lot of smaller perch 
you, it's not only perch you can target with this. You, no. you, you do a lot of fishing. I know you said from your kayak, yep. you do a lot of fishing. You've had chub doing this. Yep. So it can be, as long as it's something that would attack, say, a lesser moving thing, you'd be happy to use this fish with it. Yeah, yeah. I've had chub, big chub. They love it. Um, tend to fish it up in the in the water column a bit more, not quite down on the bottom like we were this morning for the perch. Yep. Uh, pike, um, you know, I've had double figure pike take that little lure. Yeah, um, like, at least you got that bit, of, like you said, that bit of wire on bit there of wire to protect on there. it from you. Um, even if you, you know, you, you can you can go down even smaller. And uh, I don't think I've got anything super small in here, but I've got some smaller stuff. Um, yeah, see, that's a bit smaller than we're using today. You get down into something like that, and you'll start to pick up bream, really? roach. Yeah. Yeah. See, that would surprise me initially that that would actually happen. No, there's certain times of the year when uh, all coarse fish will will be we'll predatory. Take something. You know, and yeah. Take something smaller, and at the end of the day, that represents a worm as much as it does a yeah, small fish. It looks fish, a bit, you know. especially yeah, like you said, that that flutter of the tail as that goes down, that's going to yeah. irritate it nicely. So then, like I said, one more thing before we go, because one thing I struggled with before you, you were showing me earlier is how you actually hook these on, because that's just as important as working them nicely, which we'll talk a bit more about how you work and when we get fishing. But if I just take this one off, yeah. if you just show me again how you hook that on, because that is relatively important, and a little bit about the little weight setup we've got on there, because it was all quick change and really efficient, which I was quite impressed with when you showed me it. So this is a, we'll just take the other one Take first. the other one? Yeah, I'll just show you the other one first. So this is a fixed jig head and basically it's so that's just straight onto your wire and completely fixed. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a piece of lead with an upturned eye and the, and the hook comes straight off that and uh, you take your lure with that, work out which way you, up you want the lure to fish yep. and then you literally like threading a worm on you get the head, you push it through till you get to about the point where you're going to come out. Yep and then actually comes, push it, it on. So that one was actually really quite nice and simple. It's just yep. you thread it on like a worm, come out the top and leave plenty. Do you, would you leave it at the hook point showing? Because I know you said with them you can, as they attack so, them really quickly, you can leave the hook covered in there. Yeah, it depends on the, on the on how much structure you're fishing. I, I, if, if, there's, if it's quite a bare bottom, you can, you can have the hook showing like that. If there's a bit of structure about, and, you're, and weed especially, you can uh, stick them in. So you'd actually almost leave the hook sort of covered you, within that you little can get rubber bait. A little bit. A little bit better, so it's, bit it's not so much exposed. weed and stuff like that. That's right. But then if there's if you're still getting trouble from weed, then you can go on to what we have here. See this one was what I was Which is a a worm hook which is which you allows you to fish it weedless. So again you take your lure, you put it up against the side of the Again, bait. just to see what's, where it's going to end up. But yeah. The difference with this is you first you hook it through the tip of the head, so then it comes out through the bottom. Thread the worm or the fish pattern up onto the shank of the hook, and then you've got it. This one is a little bit more fiddly than the other one, but fiddly. but once it goes on, it was actually really really good. And how it worked was impressive. So then you put the slit, open it up, yep. push the hook through there. So it's still in principle on the hook the same way, yeah. but it sits slightly different and much easier to okay. do that weedless presentation you were saying. Because actually there's no hook point there, is no. there at all? And that was the biggest, I think, the biggest surprise for me this morning is when we first got it, that was all covered. I was like, there's no way that's gonna hook, but every time I was, I was playing with it, pretty much every time it's a knock, they hook it. So that, I think that one for me is really good, which is another little quick thing about the leads yeah, and that, isn't the, there? The head on this is, is different. It's not a fixed lead, so basically, that jig head there, you can interchange different size hooks. You could we could switch to a non worm hook, so a non weedless hook, if, yeah. you, if we found that there wasn't any any weed about. Um, and by in doing that, you just push. It's just all quick change, isn't it? So that comes pull off. Pull that out. Push that off like that, and the head's still attached. And then just. And then you just change your hook. Change over. your hook. So that'd be fine. Can you, you can also change the weight quickly on that one. So if you want to go yeah. heavier, so everything about it is just quick change and done yeah. again. Um, I also quite like it if you've got a, a bait with a, a bit of uh, buoyancy in it. Yeah. By having that upturned head, the, the bait will actually sit up. Right. Okay. Yeah. Off that. 
and because it's because you've got that movement between the the eye on the hook and and the eye on the jig head, you've got that bit of movement there. So if you're playing in movement between all manner of different things, and especially pointing down, it even looks like possibly a little feeding fish or something that's right, like yeah, that. Yeah. So that's probably why they're smashing these lures so hard. And um, like I said, it was pretty fast this morning. Oh, yeah. So it's... I think we probably better get back to it, and we'll talk to you a little bit more about how you're working them because. Like I said, I learned loads this morning in like five minutes just about how gentle you were in bits and pieces. So if we hook these back up and get back round there, yeah, definitely, then we'll, yeah. uh, we'll do a little bit more about how you're working them, what sort of place you're looking to cast and where these things can be fished as well. So let's get back round there and uh, see if we can have some more. So after having a little look at the gear, we're back around here fishing again now. I've got my rod behind me, see what I can learn from Johnny. So like we said earlier, a bit about how you actually retrieve it in that. So you're just literally making small movements. It's all about transferring this down into the water to your lure. And it's about using this braid and the, and the light tip, like we said, to maximise the, um, the movement or, or minimise the movement, depending on what the fish you know, want. So it's, it's all in the in the fingers and the wrist. So each time they'll be wanting different, sometimes they'll want it faster, slower, so it's all about working on the day. Yeah, that's right, yeah. No, it's really is amazing, like literally you, you turn that handle at like almost not even turning it really. It's just about keeping in touch, always keeping in touch. And, and as we found this morning, these fish at the moment are, are taking it just as the, the lures coming up and then on the drop yeah. that's when they're having it i know that's one of the first things you said to me you noticed that within three casts and I was, I was a bit like how did you notice that but having had a little go myself i think everyone i hooked was as it was sinking uh, they just come up and you sort of feel that rattle and you're on that's the, the the little things that you've got to pay attention to is is just knowing when that fish is taken so you can so you can react to that and, yeah. and, and do more of it. I suppose um, that must that must just come with experience because like, you you literally done it in a couple of casts, which I would have done, but you've done a lot of this sort of fishing, so with a bit of experience, you'll work that out pretty quick. It is enjoyable as well, so it does. It's one of the things that um, once you start to do it, you, you soon get hooked. So you you, you tend to do more and more. Yeah, of I it, think so. I'm going to buy myself a little set. <laughs> but so where we are as well, this is a perfect sort of area. Is it? Obviously, we've got boats around like perfect cover and, and bits and pieces that's what you'd be looking for yeah loads of structure um dramatic change in depth um there's there's a bit of weed in the water as well which always helps holding the bait fish um they're, they're, they're generic sort of uh, predator spots really um but the perch do particularly like these these um like close to the to the edges right here close, yeah. yeah under the pylons and um so would it work just as well on say like a big open river or is it not really the place to use it it's it wouldn't be as effective um you, there's certainly you can use it but anyway you've got a lot of flow obviously you have to increase the weight weight that you're using that and then good for that little quick change weight and if you're moving right. places different places have another go now because there was loads of perch here earlier i'm sure Let's see if we can get one within the next couple you'll um there's You'll a little, one. little bit of a drop off out there where there just seems to be a bit of a shoal. Not and you just sort of, you feel him for that rattle, aren't you? It's yeah, that's not right. Like, yeah. You're not really waiting him like a, well, a pike probably would, but it's not a real smash and grab. It's sort of, just feel that rattle through the rod tip. I don't know if that boat was upset. I think things. these boats have, yeah, obviously from the small one, it's quite a lot lot more colour. Would that yeah. encourage, would you use a brighter lure or how, um, how often would you change on that subject? Would you change all the while? Or? It's all about confidence, really. So as long as you're confident in what you're using, then, then stick with it. But as soon as you start to doubt something, doubt something, have a change. You know, that's what that's how I work. If I, if I doubt something, I, I change up until I find something that wor works again, and then bec become confident again. Um, obviously, if there is if there is a, a lot of colour in the water, then you do want something that's going to show a up and be a bit brighter. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, hello, just had a little, a little inquiry nibble. there. So I can almost see just watching your line. That sort of, as it drops, see, I see that little rattle just watching the end of the rod. And always fish right into your feet. You never know where they're going to be. You know, often there'll be as many fish right by your feet. So with that little inquiry, you've obviously felt felt a little rattle. Is that the time to let it drop, yep. or is it speed it up? What, what's the process of when you do Very that? often, if you get a little rattle like that, you 
let it drop right to the bottom and just on the next twitch they'll have it again. And then right, so it's always clear your that's come off, but you never want to recast with any um, any muck of any kind on your on your lure or your hook because uh, the fish will pick up on it's it. Surprising how well they work though. There's a lot of lot of stuff on the surface and they're not catching it at all. No, are they? no. Within a ten minutes we're actually having a break. As soon as as soon as Hello. Oh, third time lucky, mate. It didn't <laughs> take long, did I? But like I said there was a lot of them here earlier. Still a wee little one, but great fun, though. He's gone. So there's notice as well, one thing you are certainly doing is you've literally got next to nothing, haven't you? You've got a rod, a little jig, and then a bag. Literally, that's all you've got. That's, all, you, that's all you need. Yeah, that's it's, it. You've got a little net as well. It's one of the beauties of this, is this method. You really do not need a lot of gear. You know, it's just about the rod, the reel, your line, and your baits. Little so selection of baits. In here, I'll have just a few packets of different hooks, just a wallet with a few different soft plastics in. Oh, there's different baits in that in there as yeah. well, yeah. So basically, you you can move, well, just all the while, really, yep. can't you? So one spot, no good, you're off to the next one, trying to find some fish, and you're doing all that. And relatively, actually, if you're starting out, cost-wise, is pretty cheap oh, as well, it's, isn't it's it? it's very cheap, yeah. Um, you know, there's very good rods on the market now for 50, 50 pounds, you yeah. know, and, so and reels as well. Getting into fishing, this would be a cracking way to start someone off in a, oh, yeah. a little adventure in, into fishing. Definitely. Um, really nice method for kids. It's, you know, once you, it's not, it's not the hardest method in the world. Um, and also the, as you can see, as we had this morning, you know, when you find fish, you yeah, do catch a lot of fish. It was great this morning, weren't it? Like literally like every other cast was one, but I think I'm going to, um, I'm going to grab off what you catch enough now. I'm going to see if I can uh, see if I can have a couple as well. So I'll grab the old rod up. Well, we just popped round to the other side. We left Johnny fishing over there, and I'm going to see if I can put some stuff into practice. That oh, little touch of that he showed us earlier. So, like I said, I've never done this before, apart from the half an hour perhaps that I fished this morning, and um doesn't take long for you to work out in your head the bits that we were talking about earlier and how you can see how things work and what you need to be doing not just letting that sink it's a little bit deeper on this side the only reason i moved is because the boats were stirring up quite a lot of the silt and that from the bottom it's a little bit clear around here and touch deep we're losing a lot of the water with the tide Let's see if i can uh catch one for myself. Well here we go, my lesson in jig fishing has paid off. Not the uh, not the biggest perch but there's loads of these little fellas out there and it's just great fun. Like I said something I've never done before to come out catch on a new tactic, new information, it's all good fun. So let's uh, quickly unhook him or we'll slip him back. I think that's my lesson over in jig fishing. We're gonna carry on fishing now for a couple of hours, but the camera was going. And obviously I'd like to say a big thanks to Anglin Direct, Spro, Gamma Katsu, and obviously Johnny for giving us away all his tips and tricks that he's honed over the years. It's certainly gonna be something, oh, there we are, look, one in the last go. Certainly gonna be something I'm gonna be investing in. Get myself a, a little rod and reel, but for now, little perch to end with and as always a big thanks for watching and we'll see you again in the next one